When was the first automobile invented? Well, that depends. If you mean, by first, the first gasoline-powered internal combustion engine, that was 1885. If you mean electric, 1881. If you mean hydrogen gas-powered, 1807. If you mean steam, 1770. And this is it. Actually, this is a full-scale working replica of the world's very first steam-powered, self-propelled, two-cylinder, front-wheel drive automobile invented by French Army Captain Nicolas Cunot. The first automobile. And it now has quite a place at the Tampa Bay Automobile Museum in Pinellas Park, Florida. Alan Morin is the director. The original, the wood frame was created in Lorraine from the original area where the wood was uh, sourced for the original Cunha, Fardier de Cunha. So this was uh, important to get, to get authentic uh, wood, substance, design, and manufacturing. Now the steel parts were made here, so even those grass, those big grass cylinders were turned on our lathe back in Polytown. The uh, pressure vessel was made at Connecticut Boiler Works, and the copper kettle was created at Armature Works outside of Tam in Tampa. The reproduction was commissioned and built by businessman Alan Cerf. Cerf has been collecting rare vintage automobiles since the 1950s. Mr. Cerf owns Polypack Manufacturing, one of the world's largest manufacturers of packaging machines. When he moved his business from France to Florida, he brought his collection with him. The collection grew, and in 2006, he created the Tampa Bay Automobile Museum so he could share his rare vintage European automobiles with the public. Each has some unique feature that represents a breakthrough in the technology that helped automobiles evolve. They're not just beautiful, they represent milestones in automotive history, like the Kuno. Many are over 100 years old, and all have current registrations, which means they can be legally driven on the streets. Cuneau called his invention the Fartier Vecteur, or steam carriage. Cuneau was an artillery officer and an engineer in the army of King Louis XV. He'd seen a large Newcomb steam engine used to pump water and thought, what would happen if you miniaturized it and adapted it to pull a carriage? that would be able to carry a large, heavy artillery barrel. He could replace all of the two-horse gun carriages of the day by harnessing the power of steam. In 1770, after several years of work, it was ready. Oh, you, you, you gotta think this is the first vehicle that's moving on its own. So it'd be like looking out the window today and see a UFO fly by. You know, because it was so amazing and people were not sure really what it was. A lot of things that they call a still because they see the bourbon on the uh, bourbon on the bulk barrel. And uh, the barrel is actually, bourbon was the king's name in 1770. So that's why it's not bourbon, it's bourbon. We, we take it out, we try to take it out once a year and we do take it to events depending um, what the, the event is. The Google worked, but it wasn't very efficient. It had a top speed of about two and a half miles per hour, and it had to make frequent stops to stoke the boiler and add water. Cuneau also didn't include brakes, so shortly after it made its first appearance, he crashed it into a wall, earning Captain Cuneau the distinction of being the world's first automobile driver and the first person in the world to cause an automobile accident. France was undergoing significant political and financial changes that would ultimately lead to the revolution. Cuneau's supporters in the military didn't have enough power to continue funding his project, and it was soon shut down. His invention eventually found its way into the Museum of Science and Industry in Paris, where it's on display to this day. Cuneau had been given a pension by the king, but it was taken away in the revolution, and he went into exile in Belgium, where he lived in obscurity and poverty until the last few years of his life, when Napoleon Bonaparte, who had begun his military career as an artillery officer, restored the pension and invited him back to Paris. Cuneau only lived a short time. He died in 1804, but his pension and his pride had been restored. 
Cuneau was born in 1725 in Lorraine in the small village of Vaux-Bacon. His hometown has honored him with two statues commemorating him and his invention. If you would like to see the Cuneau, it's on display in the museum, along with all the other beautiful and classic cars in the collection. The museum is located adjacent to the Polypack plant at 3301 Gateway Center Boulevard. It's open from 10 a.m. to 4.30 from Tuesday through Saturday and noon to 4.30 on Sunday. There is an admission charge. The Tampa Bay Automobile Museum is an outstanding museum and a testament to the vision of Alan Surf. It celebrates the machines and the people who designed and built them and the people who have the passion to enjoy and preserve them. Time to travel. This is Phil Dean at the Tampa Bay Automobile Museum in Pinellas Park, Florida.